You are in the Temple of the Rants, where I rant about whatever my $15 a month plus patrons want me to rant about. You can get one of these by becoming one of those. This one is for Finders Jeepers, who says to rant about Shinsei Kamate-chan. Oh boy, one of my favorite bands! I'm just gonna go through my whole story with this band. Um, I discovered them, of course, because of the Denpa Onato Seishun Otoko OP from Studio Shaft. Uh, phenomenal song, in my opinion. It was sung by the voice actress of the show, and I just thought that both the video and the song were immediately captivating to me. The The sound of Shinsei Kamate-chan is sort of chaotic and unkempt. They basically have, um, you know, generally pop rock uh, song structures um, and chord progressions. There's sort of a jangly guitar playing from lead singer Noko and, and songwriter, um, that's, that's pretty straightforward. Their drumming is kind of fucking all over the place in the bass line. Like, if you, if you try to fixate on the drums or bass in a Shinsei Kamate-chan song, you'll just be like, what the fuck are they even doing? But it's kind of drowned out by the, the, not just the guitars, which are even pushed into the background, but what's over top of everything is just these dizzying keyboard melodies that are usually just melodically going crazy, just all kinds of arpeggios and just, like, lush swells of just tons of noise. And I love noisy, dense, complicated music, you know? It's not even that they're, like, super musically interesting, per se. It's just a lot of fucking sound, and it creates a, a really interesting aesthetic and, and um, you know, mentality that's just, like, uh, overwhelming and very emotional. And then you have Noko sc screaming slash singing completely off-key manic, insane, screaming about suicide and, uh, you know, gender disparity, like not being sure of your gender and things like that. All stuff that I, of course, relate to, especially back in 2011 when I found this band. So, like, I immediately started trying to investigate them, and at the time there was no fucking information in English about this band. But, um, Noko would, you know, create these songs, um, initially in demo form, and make these weird-ass YouTube videos where it was usually just him with a camcorder or him with, like, other members of the band, like, filming him, I guess, just going around, just, like, fucking around in Tokyo. Like, just running around on a mountain or by a lakeside or on the train, just, like, doing goofy shit, often, uh, you know, like, just cross-dressing and going through the streets of Tokyo and just, like... Just all these, like, um, very home video feeling kind of things that resonated with me super fucking hard because I've been doing, you know, videos with this kind of aesthetic for a long time. Again, the lyrics and the, the just the raw, insane emotion of it all. This was, like, when I discovered this band, it was like, this is a game changer for me, you know? And at the time, in... So what... what the way their career trajectory went is, is kind of insane because... They put out their first three albums in 2010. And their first one was sort of more of an EP. It was only eight tracks. Um, pretty much all killer, no filler. I'm not the biggest fan of the last track on there, I guess. But, like, yeah, it's, it's a fantastic release. It came out in, like, March. And I think they just kind of instantly blew up. A lot of it on the strength of just how cult they were. Because Noko would go around, like live streaming himself all the time just like on a laptop like just ranting into the camera um you know he's just like t early 20s guy who's clearly mentally unhinged you know um i think he got in trouble for like cutting himself on stage in one of the early performances uh they were just like this this weird sort of mysterious group Noko would never do interviews, you know, like, he's, he's streaming all the time, but he would never do interviews and just, like, be the rest of the band and shit like that. So, um, I think that they immediately established this, like, fervent cult following, and I'm really sad that I couldn't have been a part of that in any way, because obviously I don't speak Japanese and none of this shit's getting translated, so it was, you know, hard for me to, like, go watch the streams or anything like that, um... But, yeah, like, that was sort of the, the core of, and, like, a lot of people were reporting on them because, obviously, this is a highly interesting band. And I think their music, their song, Rock and Roll, uh, I can, uh, is echoing through my head. I don't know how to translate. Rock and Roll by Narayama Nai, um, which is a great song and, of course, was their, like, debut single, first track on their first album. Um, probably the most, like, structured and, like, easily comprehensible version of their sound. It, like, it... 
that song basically became the template for the Shinsei Kamate-chan song, which we're going to talk about eventually. But, uh, like, uh, I think that was used in a movie or something, which was part of how their, their starting happened. Well, then, like, six months later, they put out two albums on the same day, uh, Min Na Shine and uh, Tsumane, and, which means Everybody Die and Boring, respectively. Uh, their first album was called To Kill a Friend. And these al all three of these albums are fantastic, in my opinion. Sumane is definitely their, their best. It's the one that's most often cited. Uh, when, when people actually find out about this band, that's usually the album they go to. And it's, it's just so fucking good. And again, like the lyrics are so disturbed. They had songs like Ikareta Neat, meaning abnormal neat, which is just a song about being a boring neat. And the vocal delivery, it's like, because it's kind of this like, this, this sort of slow... Um, I almost want to compare it to, like, Long View by Green Day, like, this, like, kind of plotting, bass-driven song, um, that's just kind of upbeat and chipper, but the vocals are like, Asakana, Banadu, Boku wa, Tanushi, and then the chorus is him screaming, Ikarete ni, Tao, over and over again. There are songs where he just screams through the entire track over, like, what sounds like it would be a bubblegum pop song, you know? Or where all of the lyrics are, I want to die, I don't want to die, I want to die, I don't want to die. Um, am I a boy? Am I a girl? Am I a boy? Am I a girl? And then other ones have more of, like, a storytelling aspect, like, uh, the story of the worst girl, which is just, like, paints an image of, like, a depressed Fujo who wants to kill everyone in her class, basically. It's the music of, sc of school shooters who never shot up a school, basically. So, you know, people like me. And uh, then in 2011, they put out the fourth album, which is called To August 32nd, which is, <clears throat> I still think, a really great album. The opening track, Guro Ihana, um, is if, you know, when I was talking about the, like, the, how rock and roll Wa Nariyama Nai is, like, represents the, like, um, what's the word I want to use? Like, the emblematic... Shinsei Kamate-chan song, Guru Ihana is, like, the best version of that. Like, it was, like, they've completed it, they've done it, they nailed it. It's five and a half minutes of rising action, this enormous finale of keyboard freakout, um, you know, a really memorable chorus. Love that fucking song. But this uh, album is only, like, ten tracks, and two of them are just re remakes of songs from the first album, like, re um, reproduced or whatever. And... Keep in mind that already, like, when I got into the band, I had mostly found their uploads on YouTube, which were all for demo versions of the songs that sounded even more chaotic and insane. Um, and I liked that. Initially, I, it was hard for me to transition to the album versions because the album versions are better produced. And even, I mean, it still sounds like fucking complete insanity. But, like, if you listen to the YouTube ones, it's uber rough. The gain is always, like, way too high. Everything sounds like shit. And I loved that about it. Um, there are certain songs that I think, like Baby Rainy Daddy is a good example of a song that the original sounded even better to me because the vocal harmonies on like the bridge are haunting in the way that they were originally recorded, um, where it's like five voices all at equal volume, whereas of course in the finished version they're more like backing voices and it didn't have the same impact, but nonetheless, I did eventually get really into the studio versions of all those albums. And, uh, you know, I, I like the remixed versions of the songs on To August 32nd. It's just kind of like they're basically the same songs. But otherwise, still a solid album. And uh, what's great about Shinsei Kamate-chan is they have a lot of variety across their albums. Not just in the sense of, like, faster songs, slower songs, stuff like that. But there'd be, like, just experimental instrumental pieces on there. Or songs that just sound really different or really intense. Um... I remember reading a review of their, their first three albums uh, early on that pointed out how uh, on the first album, when you get to track, I think, four or five, the one that's about like not wanting to go to school, um, when you don't have the keyboard as like a central focus of the song, like carrying the melody, it sounds so much more intense and frantic. So any song where they like really go for more of a rock and roll vibe just sounds fucking crazy. You have stuff like... Ultimate Razor on fucking Sh Mina Shine, where the chorus is Ultimate Razor! Ultimate Razor! 
Teresa! I actually blew the speakers on my laptop playing that song one time, <laughs> which because the fucking gate is so boosted. Um, but yeah, uh, those first four albums are all great, and I love them. Well, um, they've continued putting out albums since then, but it's very much to me a case of the, I think Noko got too happy. I don't I don't know how to put it. Like the early music was so tortured and it was obvious that all of it was written at once in like a big spurt, a fit of inspiration. Noko made all these songs about all the tortured shit that he was feeling. Well, then the band becomes a big success and uh, they start making their sound just a little bit more marketable. Their their next album Tanoshine didn't really feel like it had any new ideas. It kind of felt like it was the same types of songs, the same song structures as before, but because in my head I'm always going to just be comparing these songs to the old ones um, that sound just like them, I couldn't get into it. Like They just seemed like worse versions of songs that already existed um, with very little experimentation. And again, the sound was even more cleaned up. I even felt like just the title of the album, because obviously Sumane means boring, Tanoshine means fun, I think they were just trying to make something that's more fun, more mainstream inclined. Um, and then, you know, for a while, Noko would still occasionally release songs on YouTube that weren't making it onto the albums that I thought were better than anything on the albums. And they were, you know, once again, in that rougher, self-produced style that uh, really resonated with me. There were like three tracks that came out in, in the time between... Um, to August 32nd and Fun that I thought were like three of the best songs they ever made. A couple of those showed up on the next album, Hero Syndrome, but again, I didn't care for the mixing on this one. Like, it was a lot more experimental than the previous one. It had a lot more digital sound included in it, but like, it just felt like a little too clean and certain production things like that were done, like some of the songs that sounded great in demo form, I thought didn't sound as good when they were cleaned up, you know? Um, and then, uh... There was like an album of just old songs that had been updated to sound even cleaner, which once again, I was like, this is kind of getting away from the point to me. I don't know if this is just for the new the new fans who can't listen to the old music and so they need it to be refurbished for them or something, but I didn't get the point of it at all. Um, I think they've put out a couple more albums since then. I don't know if I've heard whatever their latest one is, but just, like, everything I've listened to has just felt like a watered-down version of what I had before. And, like, just the raw emotional shit was what I really cared about. And, like, Noko still sometimes puts that stuff out on YouTube. Occasionally you get something like uh, uh, Hot-Blooded Internet Boys, which is one of my favorite tracks by them. Um, he also had a period where he did, like, remixes of some of his songs with Hatsune Miku singing them, which was interesting. Apparently, he still puts out, uh, like, raw mixes of songs on, like, a personal channel that, like, a personal Nico Nico Doga channel that's, like, I guess behind, uh, I don't know if it's behind a paywall or if you have to have, like, a premium account or something like that to, to do it, but someone's been re-uploading them. I haven't gotten around to listening to those yet, so it's possible there's been a whole bunch of Shinsei kamate chan songs I would love that I haven't even heard yet, but yeah, I'm still basically, like in the trenches with the first four albums, that first year of just absolute mania um, is what has, you know, stayed with me the most. Um, and, and the rest of it I don't even really listen to. But, yeah, the just the, the, sh the, the vibe of the music was exactly how I felt at that time. You know, 2011, when I was a neat, when I was, like, confused about myself and my future and not knowing, you know, anything about what I wanted out of life. I felt like I was right in the same spot Noko was in. And obviously as a Japanophile, you know, I could relate to even the, the, you know, the, the vibe of what life is like for a Japanese person, as opposed to an American, since most of the media I was consuming was Japanese. All right. That's fucking enough about that. 